Hello, welcome to Radical Engagement at Varm Blog, and we continue through our journey with rain prices and anarchist view of the class theory of the state. We are about halfway through the essay in the defense of the class theory of the state section, and I'm going to share the screen with you so you can see that I am reading it correctly if you are following on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm hoping you all have a great view today. All right. In defense of the class theory of the state section. So, there are many factions of the capitalist class, other classes, and non class forces all competing for state influence. And the state itself has its own interest and a degree of autonomy from even the bourgeoisie. Does this mean that the class theory of the state is wrong? I don't think so. Asterisk, this is Warren talking, neither do I. On asterisk. In itself, there are many there may be multiple determinants of something does not decide the relative weights of the importance of each determinant i mean in some ways duh right i'm just going to repeat that in itself that there may be multiple determinants of something does not decide the relative weights or importance of each determinant that should be obvious but it isn't to a lot of people all right back to the text there are many influences on the state all of which may have some effect. Still, the overall need of capitalist society to ma is to maintain capitalist economy, the growth and accumulation of capital, the continued rule of the capitalist class. Without the surplus wealth pumped out of the working population, the state and the rest of the system cannot last. This is also, by the way, an attack on people like Graeber who accepted a state theory of money and that basically these systems were um endogenous to themselves that like they don't need anything to support themselves they create this by the creation of a labor token or uh currency etc i tend to find this view um to miss what that token of labor or what that wealth actually hides which is a power relationship anyway Back to the text. Without the surplus wealth of the working population, the state and the rest of the system cannot last. This is the primary need of the society and the primary task of the state. Even if the bourgeoisie has little or no direct control of the government, as under Bonapartist, as under Bonapartism or fascist totalitarianism, the state must keep the capitalist system going. The capitalist driving the proletariat to work and the profits being produced. Asterisk, this is why subsuming particular capitalists to your state is not actually that big a deal. It can actually save capitalism as a whole. Uh, and this goes against some, some very simple Dungus readings these days. The extreme example of this is under the Stalinist state capitalism in the USSR, Maoist China, etc. That's asterisk. I think that's too simple to say Maoist China was state capitalist. Um, this is, uh, Price's relationship to Draper and Draper's relationship to Shackman really shows up here. But anyway, the stock owning bourgeoisie was abolished, yet the collective state bureaucracy continued to manage the accumulation of, of capital, the state exploitation of, of the working class. That is, it fell back into traditional capitalism. I still think that's too simple. Um, the, we'll get into that. But it depends on what you think the key element of capitalism actually is, whether or not you think that held true in, quote, state capitalism, unquote. Um, and today, like, there's a stock-owning bourgeoisie in China, so I don't know what you're talking about, even if the state is one of the largest holders of that. All right. This has been elaborated by Weatherly, 22, 20, 2002, 2005. The class theory, quote, Involves a claim that the capitalist class is able to wield more potent power resources against the pressure from below and the capacity for independent action on the part of the state itself. The political sway of the capitalist class is not exclusive, but predominant, whether late 20, uh, 20, 2002. Quote, it does not claim that the economic structure exclusively explains the character of the state, but it assigns these other influences a minor role. Economic causation plays a primary role in explaining state action. 
<coughs> to sustain accumulation as a general feature of capitalist society. A state nominally sustains accumulation and thus largely explains by the nature of the economic structure. Other the have theorized the interactions and overlapping oppressions each with each other and other class exploitation as quote social reproduction theory, but Charia 20, uh, 2017. The different oppressions are not simply separate while occasionally intersecting, but rather they co-produce each other with it within the overall drive of the whole system to reproduce and accumulate capital. For example, the oppression of women is directly related to the need for the system to reproduce the power of all workers necessary for capitalist production, which is done through the family. Asterisk was done through the family. I don't know if it is done through the family as much anymore. An asterisk. Similarly, Africans were, were enslaved to create a source of cheap labor. African Americans remain racially oppressed in order to maintain a pool of cheap, super exploited labor. That's a kind of internal colony. That's more adding that. As well as to split and weaken the working class as a whole through white racism. These factors are not the whole of sexism or racism, but are there essential overlap with capitalist exploitation? So for for price, and, and in this in this part of this, I agree with him. Sexism, racism, other things are part of but not essential to and overlap with but cannot be reduced to the way capitalist interaction goes at hand. But this is why I, I think you always have to maintain a focus on class on class first. Not necessarily only class, you can't reduce everything to that, but that it's the primary thing driving the state, economy, etc. The state is not something added to the capitalist society, but is necessary if capital labor processes to go relatively smoothly. Asterisk, yeah, that's how capitalism came to being in the first place. It wasn't like capitalism pre-existed state formations. It's concurrent with the development of the nation state. An asterisk back to the text. As reciprocally, as reciprocally, the efficient functioning of the capitalist production process is necessary for the state to exist. Yep, you got to produce stuff and it's got to be taxable, etc. You got to command labor power. That's what taxes are about as much as income. Prim accumulation in the state. The classical bourgeois economists, economists such as Adam Smith and David Ricardo, have speculated that capitalism began by artists and the small merchants gradually building up their capital until they had, had enough to hire employees. This was called the primitive, primitive or primary accumulation. Marx rejected this fairy tale, showing how the state and non-market forces played major roles in the accumulation of wealth. Something that people should remind Robert Brenner of sometimes. That's Derek talking. There was state-sponsored deposition of European peasants, slavery of Africans and Native Americans, looting of Ireland, India, and South America, piracy, the plunder of the natural environment. In capital, Marx wrote of quote, the power of the state, the concentrated and organizing forces of society to hasten the hothouse fashion and the process of transformation of the feudal mode of production to the capitalist mode forces itself an economic power. Marx, 1906 translation. Kropotkin criticized Marx's concept of primitive accumulation, not because he disagreed that state coercion played a major role in the development of the cap of capitalism. He completely agreed with Marx on that point. Rather, Kropotkin insisted that state support for capitalism never stopped, which I think is actually true. <laughs> this is Varn talking. I think most Marxists think this today. There was no distinct period of early accumulation followed by a period of state non-intervention in the economy. Uh, Kalecki would argue this today in liberal circles. Kropotkin. What then is the use of talking with Marx about primitive accumulation, the push given the capitalists were a thing of the past? The state has always interfered in the economic life in favor of the capitalist exploiter. It has always granted him protection and robbery, given aid and support for further enrichment, and it could not be otherwise. To do so, so was one of the functions, the chief mention of the state, Kropotkin. 2014 translation. Similarly, the Marxist feminist uh, Sylvia Frederici, asterisk, I do not love her work on asterisk, writes, the need of the gender perspective on the history of capitalism led me, among others, to rethink Marxist account of primitive accumulation. Contrary to Marxist anticipation, primitive accumulation has become a permanent process. Asterisk, I think this is why national consolidation always leads to imperialism. 
because you can't uh, the accumulation process uh doesn't ever stop that's Barnes' take. Anyway, back to the text. Sim, uh, however, Marx had expected once capitalism reached its final development, its ecological decline, it would once again rely on, on non-market and state forces. In the Grundrasse, he wrote, quote, as soon as capital begins to sense itself as a barrier to development, it seeks refuge in forms which, by restricting free competition, are the heralds of its dissolution. Quoted in Price, <laughs> 2013. In any case, no one could deny that the government intervention is a central part of the economy, from maximum armament expenditures to central banks to regulation of the stock exchange. The key point is, is that the state is not an institution truly distinct from the capitalist economy. On the contrary, it is a central instrument in its creation, development, accumulation, and eventually decay of capitalism. Quote, force itself as an economic power. End quote. This is why the division between economic and political uh, both seems natural under capitalism, but is, a fix, is essentially fake. So I agree with Price on that. Um, it's a lot of concepts being thrown out here and more that we can completely disaggregate. For example, I still don't know what, what vector of state capitalism makes it still capitalist. Which I think there are there's such a thing as state capitalism in Virginia, and I think a lot of things that we currently call quote socialist is state capitalist, in that it has every single function of the state for, I mean of capital for private accumulation that is only slightly mitigated against on uh, uh, for social stability in some cases, even in quote socialist unquote governments. Uh, that was not always true, however, I don't think you can actually compare Maoist China or the USSR to post-85 Dungus or even Xi'ist China. This agreement between anarchists and Marxists on the state. Revolutionary anarchists and Marxists agree that the working class and the rest of the exploited and oppressed should overturn the power of the capitalist class. The workers and their allies should dismantle the capitalist state, capitalist business, and other forms of oppression and organize a new society based on freedom, equality, and cooperation. But they draw different conclusions from the class theory of the state. This is one of the... I like this essay because it actually explains better than most what the difference between Marxists and anarchists kind of are, um, at least classically speaking. I mean, today, neither one of them... Neither most Marxists nor most anarchists know much of their own history and can actually understand a lot of this, so it's not entirely relevant. But they draw different conclusions from the class theory of the state. Marxists say since the state is an instrument for a class to carry out its own interests, the workers and their allies need to own the state. Yeah, that's what the dictatorship of the proletariat is about. They need, they need it in order to overthrow the capitalists and create a new social society of freedom and solidarity. The new state will either be created by taking over the old state, perhaps by elections and modifying it, or overthrowing the old state through revolution and building a new one. Over time, Marxists say the task of holding down the capitalists and their other agents will become less important as a new society is solidified. Then the state will gradually decline. There may still be centralized public power for coordination, but it will be benevolent and no longer have coercive powers. Anarchist, however, anarchists have had a different conclusion. Since the state is a bureaucratic military elite machine for class domination, it cannot be used for liberation. Such a supposed worker state, however it comes into existence, would only result in a new ruling class of bureaucrats exploiting the, the workers as if the state was a capitalist corporation or a set of corporations. This was predicted by Proudhon, Bakunin, and Kropotkin way back in the beginning of the socialist movement. History has more than justified this prediction. Uh, you can't just cite that in a paragraph, Dr. Price. You have to go into that more, which I know you do in other works, but still. Instead, the anarchists propose that workers in the impress organize themselves through federations and networks of workplace assemblies, neighborhood councils, and voluntary associations. Uh, so syndicates, Soviets, and uh, voluntary associations, parties. That's part of what a party is. Uh, they should replace the police and the military with democratically coordinated armed population, aka militia, something that Cosmo agrees with. But a lot of socialists get really mad when you start mentioning that um, you need militias to replace a whole lot of the police if you're going to do it, as uh, so long as this is still necessary. 
Such associations will provide all the coordination to sit in making dispute settling, economic planning, and self-defense necessary without a state. It would not be a state because it would not have a bureaucratic military socially alienated machine such as had served the ruling minorities throughout history. It would instead be a self-organization of the, wor- of the working people and the formerly oppressed. I got. I have to uh, ask Dr. Price, does he think cancel communists or anarchists then? Because according to this, yes. All right. Um, conclusion. The class theory of the state claims the bureaucratic military social machine of the state exists primarily to develop and maintain capitalism. The current, that's what the current state does. The nation state in particular. The capitalist upper class and capital strive to accumulate, which is why nationalism is always calling for class collaboration, usually at the expense of people's own, you know, own class interests within their racial or national subtype. There are also some other influences on the state. These include factional conflicts within the capitalist class, demands by working and middle classes. You got to keep them pacified somehow. That's far in talking. Pressures on to maintain other oppressions, race, gender, et cetera, and resistance by the oppressed, other non-class forces, ideologies, and also the self-interest of the state itself and its personnel. Yet these myriad forces work out within the context of the need for capitalism to maintain itself and expand. Therefore, the political sway of the capitalist class is not exclusive, but it is predominant. I would totally agree with that, and it shows up and what actually gets passed through legislatures, my friends. The fight against the state, against capitalism, against all oppressions is one fight. It's a struggle for society of freedom, individual self-development, and the end of state the state and other classes of self-determination, self-management in the area of living. I don't even know that all anarchists would agree with Dr. Price on this, but I, I, I think, you know, with the exception that I do actually hold to, that the dictatorship of the proletariat would be necessary, that I actually agree um, with a lot of the criticisms of the, of the state as a bureaucratic force of our men that would have a reason to perpetuate its own oligarchic rule if you don't control it. Otherwise, the iron law of oligarchy asserts itself, and that isn't great for anyone, except for the people with guns. All right, so just so you guys can see, these are who he referenced, because he didn't always. So so Paul Weatherly, uh, Marxism, the state, and analytical approach. Um, Paul Weatherly, making sense of the relative autonomy of the state, and Marxism's 18th premier postmodern interpretations. Perdome, Properties Theft, Price, The Value of Radical Theory. It's a good book, by the way. Check it out. Uh, Brian Morris, Bakunin, The, Pro- the Philosophy of Freedom, uh, The Brumaire. This is the T. Carver edition. Um, Capital, Political, Political Economy, uh, edited by Ingalls, which is a modern library edition from 1906. Um, got you. That's a. That's a former capital. Kropotkin, Correct, Direct Struggle, Frederiki, Gender and Capital, and Reading Capitalism Day, Marx after 150 years. Uh, Engels, The Origins of the Family, Private Property, and State. A book that I think is both in fights and out of date. Hal Draper, The, Adventure, uh, the Adventures of the Communist Manifesto, from 19, that was published in 1998. Draper, Karl Marx, The Revolution, Volume 1, State and Rockercy. A great book. Read it. And Tihi Bacharya, Social Reproduction Theory. Oh. All right. Uh, check out the link for this in the show notes. And I find I find Dr. Rain Price, he's going to be a guest on the show, by the way, um, to be one of the more interesting anarchist thinkers because he does take Marx seriously. And he doesn't just throw Marx them out, out of hand or character or caricature it. Or, take um as someone say like uh ron tabor does like you know soviet bureaucracy is the only form of legitimate marxism etc um he tends to buy into the trotskyist state capitalist theory idea are the left communist state capitalist theory i would love to do, to read a survey of the different kinds of state capitalists so i can explain it the different ones to you because they don't agree with each other, but I find that they're often quite big and don't actually get into the specific details of the economies they're talking about. They just kind of assert it. Um, like it's hard for me to say how that like the labor token system of uh, of work exchange of say Mao in the late sixties, early seventies is a uh, state capitalism. It's easy for me to talk about. The state just holding a bunch of stocks in private corporations is 
uh, uh, you know, uh, and thus being technically an uh, one owner of many, but just a predominant owner of state capitalism. And that's a lot of what we see today in socialist societies is, but nonetheless, uh, this is an interesting thing to parse out. All right. And on that note, we're going to end. Mm-hmm.